ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, organics of all ages. I'm Double R, and in this video, we are covering Fire, Wind, Water, Hot, Go, Planet! By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet! Captain Planet, he's a hero, gonna take pollution down to zero. No, not that one. Behold! The ultimate warp zone. Kevin, I thought I told you to clean up your room. Whoa! Captain N, the Game Master. No. Try again. Another dimension, another time and space. A parallel universe is falling on its face. When out of the chaos, who else could it be? But the animal adventurers from SPACE! Bucky! Captain Bucky O'Hare! Mutants and aliens and toads beware! I'll consider that one. But not the one I'm looking for. Their creed to protect all life. Their promise to end Lord Dredd's rule. Their name, Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future. In episode one, Shattered, of this series, you learn some character interactions, and I'm going to only point those out as needed, okay? But we also learn some storyline points of concern and contention that will carry on for the rest of the of the season. Again, I'm only going to point out things that need to be pointed out in terms of foreshadowing and story. Alright? If you want to watch it, that'll be in the description down below without me blabbering on about it. So, let's cut the crap and go into the opening scene. Go here. Oscar's in place. I'm going in. Here, Scout. I'm in, but I'll need a little help getting out. What's wrong? They keyed the system. I'm locked in. Won't open again till 0600. Give us a yell when you get the bogey set. We'll get you out before it blows. I hope that's a promise, Captain. Now, I showed a lot of little things there, but let's talk about the whole camouflage and why he dispersed it as early as he did. Camouflage, apparently for the suit, is a lot like an iPhone. So the, the power suit, has an iPhone-like logic to it. 100%, great. We put on the suit itself, it burns itself down. It has its own ticker for draining uh, battery power. You know, like turning on your phone and just leaving it on. It drains the battery. Slowly, but surely, the battery will go from 100 to zero eventually. That said, if you're losing, say, 1% every five minutes of the suit being active, then putting on a camouflage like Scout did, will add additional power drainage to it. So instead of 1% every 5 minutes, it'll be like 3% every 5 minutes. Something like that. Alright? So that's why he dropped it as soon as he did. He knows he's going to be in a hostile area. He would like to, as much defense as possible. Let's not worry about being in disguise all the time because if the disguise burns the whole suit time out, you're not taking a shot, much less 2-3. to three. pretty much straightforward though. Get in there, blow the place up, get out. And I wanted to show a little bit of how the characters react and their... the way they interact with each other. 
But there is something I do want to stress out, and it comes up right about here. You're getting old, Hawk. Age has got nothing to do with it. I'm just tired. This is actually an important thing of note. It tells you that the power group, Captain Power and his team, they have been fighting for a while. This isn't just like the first skirmish in a random battle. No. This has been going on for a while. Let's keep that in mind. Now continue. I don't believe it. What are you guys waiting for? Hang in there, Scout. Clear the door and count to five. One, two, three, four, five! We're scout. That should give Dredd something to think about. Oh, my feet are sore. Can we go home now? I told you, you are getting old. Pilot! Here, Captain. Mission complete. Let's go home. As you can tell, Scout was a little, uh, hyped up, a little worried. And when the captain said, hey, count to five, uh, get away from the door, count to five. He counted as someone who's pretty much scared. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go. Why is the, why is the door still here? Blow it up. Go. Five. I'm here. That kind of thing. He wants out. The building's about to go boom. He wants out. Understandable. But, 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 in master classes, I'm going to point this out too. That's character development. That shows the audience how this character is, how he reacts to stress. Is it majorly important for a Scout? Not really, but it is important to note. It's part of his character. All right? Let's move on. You better get some rest too, Captain. Yeah, as soon as I take care of this soft day, you used to be a nice guy. Pick up anything interesting? For our buddy Dread? No. But I've got a repeating transmission on the resistance frequency. Personal message. Athena. Who? Athena Samuels. All right. In the first episode, mainly, I've had this one issue with it in the episode itself, and it comes up a couple of times, but none as evident as it is here. And that is the time lapse. You don't know how long it takes power to fly back to base. Granted, they added that scene of dread. Oh, let's put that scene in here, then you understand what I'm getting at. Power dread. The problem continues. Energy substation Zeta has been violated. Intruder identification confirmed. Captain Power. Another one. Estimate delay in Project New Order completion. Delay of three point four months. Again, power keeps me from my destiny, from my future. He must be stopped. Activate scan in digitizing system. Perhaps the answer to my future lies in power's past. You don't know how long that scene with Dread was supposed to take. Was that the entire flight time for Captain Power? It must have been because they're back at the base. And as I pointed out, there was a personal message. And he said it's been going for a bit. How long is a bit? How long are we talking here? Now, you can assume it's right after the, the power station that they attacked blew up. You can assume it's right when Dread goes, I got a plan. And then this, the signal starts coming out. It could be two hours after. It could be a week after. It could be the week before. We don't know. We don't know how long this message has been. But let's not deal or dwell too, long, too much into that. Because it is a short episode, and most episodes are standalone. So they're presuming there's some leeway given. They're presuming that. Take a direct hit? He got a message. From what planet? What's the origin of that transmission? 
Sector 19 used to be San Fran. Figures. That's where we met. Mentor. Online, Captain. Can you pinpoint the area that transmission came from? Location, formerly known as the NB District. There's very little left, I'm afraid. West Coast Resistance used it as a base until Dredd eliminated. Tell Tank and Hawk we've gone there. You monitor for any more transmissions. Pilot. All right. I wanted to leave that up there because it shows you Pilot's concern for the captain. They got the message. He read it. It was a personal joke or personal inside thing. And now he's rattled. So, of course, she's a little concerned, which leads to this conversation. Tina was my father's lab assistant. She was brilliant, beautiful. Every Friday, we'd meet at City Limits Bookstore. We'd sit, play chess, talk. I never could beat her at chess. Just friends? For a while. Then the war started. We lost track of each other. Later, I heard she joined the resistance. If Dredd burned down most of the West Coasters, then she's... She's alive. No one else could have sent that message. It was our private joke. Something only the two of us could know. That conversation was very important. And you could be... You could take it one of two ways. A tactician, or that she has personal feelings for Cap. Again, you could take it either way. Don't care. But as a tactitional... Tactitional? There's a word! As a tactician, you would see why she would ask these questions in the first place. This is your leader. This is the leader of the group. If he gets caught, your team is boned. Your team is done. Screwed. Game over, man. Game over, man. It's game over. Yeah, that. But you want to maintain the safety of the captain. If the commander goes down, everything goes to crap. Pretty straightforward, right? So her questions are logically asked. How much is the relationship between the captain and Athena? And I left the whole conversation up there because you'll notice something. For those of you who, for those of you who write, you understand shorthand. And what Captain said pretty much gives you the heads up shorthand. She's brilliant, beautiful, and he's never beat her in chess. That last part, never beat her in chess. This means, in writing shorthand, she's a better tactician than the captain. She's smart enough, brilliant, she's brilliant, better at him at chess, better tactics, and has more logic to fight, okay? Yes, captain's been out there getting experience and they've been fighting for a while. Which, of course, is my personal beef because they didn't recharge their suits. But then again, I don't know. Maybe they did recharge their suits. I don't know. Time is a little screwy in this episode. But, 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 the point remains, she's the better tactician. Signals that way, not too far. Confirmed. Better stay with the ship, pilot. Keep scanning for bio dreads. Right. Take care. Case in point, she knew about the ship dropping in. She knows there's two people that came out of the ship, no more, and Kim passed tape one. Again, time is a major issue in this episode because there's noise that pilot heard, the captain should have heard, logically speaking. But, meh, whatever. Let's move on.
Aggressive. It's the only way to win. We'll see about that. Always the same move. It's good to see you, Johnny. Athena? What? I'm sorry, Johnny. It's the best way. Warning. Power level in danger zone. 15% of maximum. Now, you know he's not dead. But this is very important because it comes up to a certain scene. And I want you to pay attention to Dredd's reaction. Report from subcutaneous tracker implanted in organic unit 658. File name, Athena Sam. She has made termination attempt on target, Captain Power. Orders state Power to be taken alive. So she dares, as I expected. Sauron! Yeah, my lord! Trace organic implant sequencer. If the woman interferes, she is expendable. But bring power. He doesn't want power dead. Hold on. Lord Dredd, leader of the Machine Empire, does not want Captain Power dead. That's weird. Why would you want your enemy to live? Now a lot of you are probably thinking the same thing. That doesn't make sense. He should want him dead. He should be happy that Athena tried to kill him. There's a reason. Later in the series, it points out the reason from Dread. But there is a reason. And there is a reason why Athena, Captain Power's ex-girlfriend or whatever, wanted to kill him instead of capture him. In fact, I'll let her explain it. I'm sorry, Johnny, but it's better this way. For both of us. Why, Athena? At least tell me why. I was in the resistance. Dreads. Things came. They wiped us out. Most of us. The lucky ones. She was in the resistance. I saw her. Then she must feel the will of the machine. Digitize her. And then you're inside. Inside the machine. You can feel it touching you, Johnny. It's wires and metal, but it touches you. And it knows every secret. Every shame, every hate, every love. It knows, Johnny. And it tortures you with the month until you... Dread brought me out to get you, Johnny. To put you in. Oh, Johnny, you don't know what it's like in there. Inside the machine. I can't do it again, not again! You're so alone. Pretty valid reason, right? She doesn't want Johnny there to suffer. It's as satisfying to me as uh, coming is, you know, as uh, having sex with a woman and coming. I'm like uh, getting the feeling of coming in the gym, I'm getting the feeling of coming at home, I'm getting the feeling of coming backstage when I pump up, so I'm coming day and night. I mean, it's terrific, right? <laughs> Good for you! Not that job. Mm. I forgot. There's a running gag with me in that word. Just... Okay. So, Captain, there's a reason why she wants the Captain to die. For 
his benefit because apparently being digitized is worse. And well, she kind of explained the resistance did well, but Sarai showed up, mopped the floor of them. I point this out because this is very, very important for later episodes. This shows you the threat Sauron creates. Power level, 10% of maximum and dropping. Possible system disruption. Recharge immediately. Yeah, tell me about it. It's not that easy to beat anymore, Athena. You never were, Johnny. When we get into the schematics, we're not actually getting into the full schematics, it's going to be my presumption of such. We'll go into why these things are important. You never were, Johnny. Did he just throw a fucking ninja star? No. Done. Bye. Episode over. Beyond the ninja star. I got nothing. It, ninja star. Is that standard? You had a, but you just do it. I. Okay. Why not? Uh, whatever. Point is, when Sauron came down to acquire them. The rest of the group showed up. A pathetic display of organic foolishness. Digitize them both, my sentry. Digitization commencing. That's good. And of course, some people might have been like, wait, how'd they get there so fast? Good question. jump ship. Hawk to jump ship. Come in, jump ship. How long was that message going before it cut to her and her recovering? Was it five minutes? Three minutes? I'm sorry, my personal, my personal thing, if I call someone three to five times and there's no response, now nah, we done here. Power up the suits, we're going out immediately. We're going to find out what happened. Because again, the base is aware from Scout that Captain Power and Pilot, they went out by themselves to investigate. They know this. So if, they didn't, so if there's a response from the jump ship after five times, they should not be sitting there trying to keep calling. No, you go and investigate immediately. You go post haste. But again, timing. I don't know how much time has passed. For all we know, 
Hawk might have been, that might have been his first attempt. Maybe there's protocol. 20, space, 20. I don't know. You see my point though, right? Time is a thing. Now, of course, this one is a little bit longer because I'm trying to make certain points about character development, keeping things noted in the story. You know, the whole nine. I'm trying to keep everything together. So I'm, I'm making this first one a little bit longer, but the other ones should be shorter. All right? So after Solana appears and gets ready to digitize them, Yeah, sure, that, whatever. You notice it takes all of them constantly wailing on him to get him to back off. And then of course they take Athena back to base and there's one specific spot that I want to point out. Threads implanted it in her skin, it's... Mm. That's standard procedure for unwilling agents. Hormone voice transmitter, sweet. Shouldn't you destroy it? Our ship and base have a jamming device. If it make you feel better, make me feel better. <laughs> that, right there, that was exactly what I want to point out. This tells you that Pilot has a history with dealing with Dredd's agents at least. She knew where to look. She knew what she was looking for. And when Scout said, hey, we could use this for something, she takes the idea from Athena to crush it and crushes it. Makes you think. But all of this is establishing things for the characters for later on. And we'll get there when we get there. All right? But until then, this is Double R. Episode 1 of Captain Power, Shattered. I, I, I honestly don't know what the title was for this episode. You can take it for many different things. I, I don't get it. Maybe it shattered his mindset. Maybe it shattered his faith in humanity. I don't know. Whatever. Eh. 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 But anyway, that's the end of this episode. Next episode will, of course, be episode 2. We're going to stay in chronological order. And number 2, episode 2, will be Abyss. Maybe y'all can see it when we get there? Hmm. But I'm Double R. I'm out. Y'all have a good day. And, uh... Party on, Wayne. Party on, Gar. Bye. He has a ninja star? Seriously, though? Tomorrow we'll take you to the passages. There's people there that can help you. But for now, you're safe. Safe? No. No, no, I can't. Dina, it's over. I understand better than I ever did. And Dredd will pay for every second of agony he's caused. But for now, Bishop Green. Aggressive. It's the only way to win. <laughs> <laughs>